freedom on wheels. An automotive age, traveling on time-saving superhighways. Futurama's free-flowing channels of concrete and steel. But these wide lanes of reality actually measure out to just a few miles scattered far apart across the friendly face of our land. We have become the nation on wheels with more motorized mobility than ever dreamed of before. Though we have the greatest highway system in all the world, it can't carry the mounting traffic of our growing greatness. We're running out of roads. We didn't dream big enough. Here's the problem, all mapped out. 3,300,000 miles of it, unimproved, improved, paved, superhighway, country roads, small city streets, big city thoroughfares, state highways networking the nation. Here's the crisis. Two-thirds of the way is now obsolete, worn out, inadequate in width, inferior in condition, capacity, and safety. Other times, 
You don't know what to expect. Ask the small town merchant. Our town has a population of 4,002, except on weekends. On Friday night and Saturday, congestion hits our main arteries like a heart attack. But customers pass us by if they can't find a place to stop. What brings up store sales today is parking space. It's as important to volume as shelf space and display windows. Best investment a town can make. Lots of parking. In small town and suburb, in cities of all sizes, the situation is the same. All snarled up. The best investment has yet to be made. Ask Mrs. America. Every day it gets worse shopping. It's not just a matter of getting through the congestion. It's impossible to find a place to park. Every night it takes longer to get home. 
wasting more time in gasoline. No wonder everybody's acting so nervous. What's a citizen going to do? What can a citizen do? To help find out, a Better Highways contest was recently conducted. Purpose? Arouse nationwide thinking on how to plan and pay for the safe and adequate highways we need. Highway experts wrote essays, along with tens of thousands of others, who already recognize the highway dilemma as one of our nation's most critical problems. I am privileged to present the winner of the Grand National Award, Robert Moses of New York. Robert Moses, New York City construction coordinator, is a world-famous highway planner, a man who knows his business. No stroke of genius, no brilliant device, no magic will suddenly produce roads commensurate with cars. We have fallen far behind. The remedies are neither easy, nor cheap, nor immediately realizable. But the task you have set is not beyond the capacity of the aroused American people. And you may be sure that they will not stop short of the goal. Mr. Moses went on to propose a 10-year construction program to cost $5 billion a year. He stressed there was no one new solution for the entire nation, but rather a combination of many solutions. And there is a solution for each community within its own capacity to accomplish. Traffic battle 
to three minutes travel time. And more miles are on the way. The people of the state of Washington are using all of an increased gasoline tax and auto license fund for the faster development of a better roads program. Many people favor toll roads like the New Jersey Turnpike financed by a bond issue, another way to raise funds. It's already paying itself off way ahead of schedule, proving that many of us who drive will pay extra by the mile and pay every trip to travel a good road. Many states already have toll roads and more are now under construction or in the planning stage. Any roadway must keep pace with the changing character of its community. Dream big and act boldly. No, the best road of yesterday can become the worst road of today just a few miles down the way. Pittsburgh is moving mountains and even relocating a railroad yard to get out of its traffic jam. County, city, and state tax money is matching federal funds to pave the way. When this boldly planned parkway is completely open to traffic, the Greater Pittsburgh Airport, instead of being an hour away, will be only a 15-minute ride from the center of the city. As has been done in other cities, Pittsburgh is digging a $4 million hole in the heart of the city to provide underground storage for thousands of cars. Above the surface, a beautiful park will camouflage the busy activity below. Or if not underground, then stacked layer upon layer in modern fireproof structures, engineered for easy access and maximum use of downtown space. In San Francisco, the Bay Shore Freeway is getting in shape for tomorrow's traffic as part of California's new 10-year, $750 million highway program, financed by state tax on gasoline and auto license fees. Chicago is moving a city to build an eight-mile-long expressway from the city limits to Michigan Avenue, wide as a city block into the heart of the loop, an eight-lane miracle which will send traffic through the middle of the main post office building like a special delivery letter. Chicagoans raised their share of the $92 million cost by a bond issue, interest in retirement to be paid for by future revenue from motor fuel taxes backed up by property taxes. Borrowing money to finance expansion is traditional with Americans. The time and money saved more than repays your investment. If you wait to pay as you go, you may not go at all. Detroit is borrowing funds to build more miles of expressway and build them today instead of years from now. We must 
fight for it at every crossroad. Widening out congested intersections. Rounding square corners for the wheels of the automotive age. We must boldly attack bottleneck and traffic jam with left turn lanes and modern interchanges, service roads, and better loading facilities. Free ourselves from the ulcer route and from no place to park. Roads are dying of old age. And come every spring, the bottoms drop out. Yep, you have to be careful driving the kids over these roads. What's a citizen going to do? Our American dream of Futurama on wheels can come true. Our highway engineers know the way. It's ours for the asking, if we'll ask and pay our way. Freedom of the road is as old as the first man and as new as this moment. Once we fought for it through forest and river, wild animals and Indians, across desert and mountain range, and we won our right of way. Now there is another payment to be made on our freedom of movement it's the price for growing greater than our biggest dream. Today, two miles of highway are wearing out for every one being built. And tomorrow, we'll have a million more drivers, not counting those in the back seat. The way ahead, is it to be a dead end or the green light? Don't honk your horn. Raise your voice. Ask for better highways and more parking space. It's your country. To get the green light, write your state capital. Write Washington, D.C. Write your hometown officials. Postcard your newspaper editor. Call your radio and TV commentators. Support your highway officials. And when you vote, vote for your right of way. Don't honk your horn. Raise your voice. It's your country. Give yourself the green light. Yeah.